Hello everyone and welcome to Twinsburg Public Library webinars. My name is Carrie Dubiel and I am your host for today. Today we will be covering the topic of playwriting basics. Now there are a lot of different reasons you might want to write a play and we're going to talk about those. We're also going to be talking about how to get started, how to write your scenes, how to outline. About a 20 minute webinar today. We're assuming that you have a little bit of familiarity with fiction writing or a little bit of basis in fiction reading, just enough to know about what constitutes a good plot, good characters, things like that. There's lots of resources you can use, which we'll talk about as well. So if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, don't worry. We're just scratching the surface today. Okay, so why would somebody ever want to write a play? Now, for some of you, you may be in a college class where you're required to write a play. So your goal may be to get a good grade in a class. For some of you, you may have an interest in the theater and you might have a reason to create something that will be acted out in front of you rather than a short story or a novel where the reader is actually acting out everything in their own mind. Playwriting is very different from fiction writing in that when your actors have the script, they're the ones who are going to be interpreting your material. So rather than the reader interpreting it in their own mind, as I mentioned, your actors will be doing so. And so there's a unique result each time the script is performed. You have different instances of the same script playing out differently you have the ability for different actors to make a different interpretation each time of your script. So you could have, for example, two different remakes of the same movie. I mean, movies are not plays, but you know what I mean. You could have a different, two completely different movies, one made in 2005 and one made in 2010 with different actors, a different director, and you get a completely different result. You have the ability to interact with your audience in a play. You might, you may not want that depending on the type of play that you're doing. For me, I personally had written several mysteries, interactive mysteries that were performed by the Twinsburg Public Library and a volunteer cast. So that's where most of my experience comes from that I'm going to be drawing from in this webinar. So... I liked that because it gave the ability for the audience to interact with the actors and the actors to do some improv. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the meat of how to start. So that, that might be another advantage for you. And then finally, as I mentioned, theater has a long history and oral tradition long before writing was commonplace. Shakespeare's time and even before that, um, in the Greeks and the, the Romans, theater is just a way that people have been expressing themselves for many years. Now, I am not a theater major by any means. I was an English major with a creative writing emphasis. So for me, writing a play was a new and different experience. And we'll talk about how writing a play was different than writing fiction as we go along. So, how do I start writing a play? Well, as I mentioned, you need to have a goal in mind. So, think about why you're doing this. As again, if it's a college class, what are the reasons? What has your professor asked you to do? How long of a play do you want? Do you need to meet certain requirements when it comes to the characters or the setting? These are all different things that are covered here under brainstorming. Now, if you're doing this for fun or for, for in my case, I was doing it for the Twinsburg History Mysteries. So in 2010, the Twinsburg Library celebrated its centennial and we wanted to do something fun that would reflect back on the history of the library and of the city of Twinsburg. So in 1902, or excuse me, it was 1910. Yeah, 1910 was 100 years, and it was May 2nd. 
1910 that was the anniversary of the library we created a play where we looked back on the formation of the library and the board that was interactive and um or excuse me instrumental in creating the library and we imagined that there was a murder at this first board meeting rather than you know the usual boring board stuff of this is what's happening you're creating a library so <clears throat> we wanted there to be a murder at this board meeting and then the audience would have to solve it so that was our goal we knew we wanted to have a certain length so we wanted to have a long enough play that the audience would be engaged in it and be willing to spend because we had had them buy tickets and we also provided food so we wanted to have a long enough play that they felt like they had gotten their money's worth they also had enough time in between acts so that they would they could talk to the actors and try to figure out who committed the crime so for me I had to think about about a 20 minute first act with no scene changes and then the interactive portion where the characters had their monologues where they talked about why they they couldn't possibly have been the murderer and then I also had to think about the final act which was probably going to be about 10 minutes. So in that case, you know, I kind of had my structure set up. In your case, you're going to think about how long do I want this play? Why am I doing this? You could consider an outline. What kind of scene changes are you going to have? How many acts are you going to have? We'll talk more about formatting on the next slide, but you can estimate about one page is about one minute. So I needed to have about 20 minutes worth of 20 pages plus the monologues and then another 10 pages to finish up the show. How many characters do you need? Again, this depends on your goal. We'll talk more again about plot, but where, you know, how many do you need? In my case, I needed enough characters that the mystery would be interesting so that the you know, if I only had three characters, you only have three choices of murderer. So we needed to have at least, I think I had eight. In prior years or later years, I had, I did this in 2010, 2011, 2012. I did reduce the number of suspects, I think down to seven, just so that we had enough. It was getting hard to come up with motivation for each of these characters, which we'll talk about also. Setting, where is your story set? How detailed do you want to be with the setting? Do you want to, you know, do you want to have the actors imagine they're in a crazy fantasy place? Or do you want to have a whole lot of props and background sets? How much time do you have to get this together? Think about things like that. What special needs do you have? In my case, most of the stories took place in normal milieus you know in a board room or inside a church one of them took place in a bar but i did have to be true to the time period because these took place in the past so i had to make sure that there was not no cell phones in the scene things like that the costumes had to be accurate people had to feel like they were in the time period that we were talking about some place can get more abstract so you may you may say, oh, we're in a we're in Narnia, but maybe we just have a wardrobe. But you your props and your setting, they need to show at least the audience a little bit of where they are so that they can imagine it. Also be thinking about your performance space. How much room do you have? What does the room look like? Things like that. So you don't, for example, you perhaps you put in a giant dragon maybe your performance space isn't big enough for a giant dragon so how do you simulate that giant dragon and how do you shift your your script depending on the performance space that you have so again we've covered the example of the play that i did try and think about your goal in your play and how you can think about all these different pieces and parts of it 
So once you have some ideas, I suggest spending some time and just writing two to three pages, maybe more, about all these different brainstorming things. You can brainstorm with a buddy. You can brainstorm on your own. There's a great book called Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg that talks about brainstorming and just getting your hand moving on the page. You really just, the only way to write is to do it. So once you've got some things to go on, some ideas, your next step is going to be writing a scene. So if you decide you want to have a certain number of acts, certain number of scenes, an act is the larger overall you know, length of time and then the scenes, you might have a setting change, you might have characters change, but in a scene you have characters talking to each other or not, but things are, something has to happen in each scene. In my case, it was just one long scene. Act one was just one long scene. There wasn't, there was some break when characters would exit and enter this, the stage, but it was mostly just one long scene. But if you have character arcs and plot things that are happening, scene changes, setting changes, you may have to write multiple scenes. It really depends on what you're going to accomplish with the story. We will talk a little bit more about story in a minute. But the best way to get started, as I mentioned, is to just do it. Start writing your scene. Have a couple of characters talking to each other. Start getting that dialogue out onto the page. You want to have your scene. Introduce your scene with some information about the setting and the characters, where they are. You can see the format of how you can write your script on the PowerPoint. There on the website there, playwriting101.com, which is also my image source, he has some good tutorials on how to write the way that the script should look as well as the stage directions, the character actions. These are the things that you're going to see the actors do, but they're not going to actually say. So you've got your dialogue that they're going to be saying. And then you've also got the directions to the actors and what they're going to do. So when you start writing these scenes, try and think of what is your objective? What, what conflict needs to happen in this scene? What point do my characters have to get through from point A to point B? And how does this advance the plot towards the end of it? We're going to talk a little bit more about dialogue later as well. But be thinking about realistic dialogue and remember that your character speaking and their actions are what's going to move the story forward. Okay, so referring back to that outline or brainstorming that you've written, see how much text you can get out onto the page. Again, using that one minute per page kind of guideline. Knowing, let's say you're writing a 30 minute play, I'm gonna write 30 pages and I want to get from point A to point B to meet my goal. So now you've got a draft, right, hopefully. So what can you do to make that draft better? We have some resources that I'm going to share later on, and playwriting is an interesting beast, but it does share a lot in common with fiction. So fiction writing craft books can help you a lot, if the playwriting books just don't do it for you, you can really spend some time digging into what makes a good novel and apply that with the special touch that's needed for theater and for playwriting. So again, look at the plot, look at the structure. As I mentioned before, make sure that there's conflict throughout. So if you have two characters just sitting there not doing anything and they like each other fine and everything's great, not much is really going to happen. So thinking about your characters, think about their development over the course of the play. Think about what they want. What is motivating them to move towards this play? Well, if you have two characters, one wants A and one wants B, and these two motivations conflict, then 
then you've got conflict. Conflict could also be in the form of action. So if you think of any sort of, you know, action movie, the villain has one motivation, the hero has another, and then they meet and it becomes a clash. That's conflict too. Or it could just be internal. But internal is going to be harder to show. Again, showing, not telling the characters convey what they're doing through their actions and through their dialogue. They don't just get up there and spout off a monologue about why they feel a certain way. You see them actually having, you know, playing out their motivation through the actions on stage and then having your separate turning points where they have emotional realizations. So your characters really need to grow and change by the end of the play and something needs to happen that can't be changed. They've gone through they've gone through so much that now they're a different person. If you take a look at a lot of books about fiction, you'll see kind of a the three act structure. You know, you have an inciting incident where something happens, the character makes a decision and now he can't turn back. You have turning point 1 where the action escalates, then you have a second turning point where things get even more dark for the character and he has a moment of no return that he can't go back. It's all, you know, it's, it looks like the world is ending and it's all over. And then you hit the climax where we have everything great that's ever happened to these people or everything horrible that's ever happened to these people. And then we have a resolution or a denouement at the end where, okay, this is done. This is the end. Now my character has changed. So you're thinking a lot about how you want to get your characters through that. Dialogue, I mentioned before, you want to make sure it's really realistic and that your characters are talking to each other like they're real people, that they're showing what's happening in the play through their dialogue. I would start with some test readings before you get your play ready for the stage. Get some friends to help you read and you can hear what sounds realistic and what doesn't. You can hear long sentences, you can hear words that don't quite go together well, and you can make a lot of changes to your text just based on that. Finally, what happens when your play gets to the stage? Now, you're probably going to end up making changes again, especially when actors are going to be doing things differently than table readers who might be just your friends. Actors will interpret things differently, as I said at the beginning of the webinar, and you will hear all sorts of things you might want to change on the fly. Also, your director will have a lot of input. As I said before, I am not a theater major by any means. I never was. So when my director came in, she decided to put some different blockings in. Blocking is the movement of the actors on the stage. She made a lot of suggestions that made the script easier to understand and it made for a more interesting script. So be willing to make those changes and again be flexible and willing to see a different interpretation every time. Your actors might flub lines, they might forget lines. You're the writer, it's your job to decide how involved you want to be with the production. Many writers, especially with screenwriting, aren't even involved at all once they get past the script stage. So just be willing to to be as involved as you want and depending on you know if this is for school and this is part of the assignment that you're going to see your work on stage just do your best and watch it unfold and be excited about it perhaps you don't want to see your work on stage maybe you just want to see your work in print and you want to distribute it our library, Twinsburg, now has a platform called Self-E, which you can self-publish your own
plays, not only that, but also stories and novels and anything that you want to write or create or film, you can upload your work to Self E and then people can check out the material from Twinsburg Library. So that's kind of exciting. If you just have an idea and you want to run with it and you want to make it available for people to download and perform, this is a great way to do so. Of course, you are giving up your rights to the library when you do this, but you can always pull these things down whenever you want. You own the right. It's just you don't know what people are going to do with it. So if you decide you don't want it on there anymore, you can pull it, but it's a good way to get your work out there and to get people excited about reading it. Here's our resource sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. Playwriting 101 website that I mentioned earlier is there. There's also the this little cheat sheet on fordummies.com and that kind of goes over a lot of the stuff that I talked about in the webinar. There are some books. Now, there hasn't been a whole lot published on playwriting in the last few years, but you might want to try Ohio Link Resources if you do have access to an academic library because I've noticed that there's a lot of very current journals and especially if you're going to write theater for children there's a lot of new information out there for these books these are books that could be found in the Clevenet system which Twinsburg is a part of you can there are also ways, if you're not a college student, to get access to Ohio Link resources. So if you have questions about that, don't forget to ask your friendly local librarian. So with that, this is the, the very basic Playwriting 101. If you have more questions, please feel free to get in contact with me. As I said before, I, I'm not the expert but I have enough experience that I could help you out a little bit and get you in touch with more resources and more people who might be able to help you. So have a wonderful day.